So another car trip and another episode of Llama Life with Von. Hey Von. Howdy. <laughs> I've got a... I'm trying to fix the audio. The audio on these is, is pretty terrible because of the car and the noise and everything. So I've got my little microphone here, which is the number one thing I've bought for the YouTube channel. It's a Rode microphone? Uh, what Plus is it? Screen? Yeah, Rode. Rode microphones. It's like $56. It goes into the iPhone and I record that, then mix the audio together. But hopefully this comes out a lot better. I could remove the ambient noise. So people have been listening to these as podcasts, I think they've called them. So, rather than the visuals, because the visuals here aren't too much, but our banter, I guess, might be a little relevant. It's a bit of fun. So, Vaughn, yesterday, we got out and did some riding. How did you find it? It was beautiful. It was like 24 degrees, sunny, country fields, some rolling hills, and wind. Lots of, lots of wind. So, I said in yesterday's video about the air hub, that I was going to set it to... So, again, just to go back over the air hub, it's... It's a front hub, a large front hub that applies resistance. It looks like a motor, it does the reverse. It actually slows you down, so it makes you work harder. But there's a lot of smarts behind it. So as you ride along, I can set it to 100 watts. So if I'm riding at 300 watts, Von next to me at the same aerodynamics has to ride at 200 watts, so I've got to work harder. Or vice versa if we flip it around. So there's a lot of smarts behind it. So what we did yesterday is I set it to 100 watts. So our FTPs are probably about 100 watts difference, maybe a bit more. But I set it to a, I had to push out 100 watts more, and I went for a ride with Von, and I was going to see how long I lasted. One hour <laughs> is the answer. Is how long I lasted. It was tough. What it felt like was, you know, when you're out of form and you go for a ride with a really quick mate. Yeah, I'm that quick mate. Yes. <laughs> Von was flying and I'm suffering up the short hills. <laughs> you don't need to <laughs> mic me laughing because I was <laughs> laughing yesterday as well. It was a very unique experience. Normally I'm going, just hold up, will you? Oh my God. Or, you know, easy, <laughs> screaming up the road. Um, but we were pretty evenly paced, I have to say. Yeah. <laughs> it only lasted an hour. Oh, it was, it was think, a good feeling for me. <laughs> but the psychology of it is usually what we do, because we're mismatched in pacing and FTP and strength on the bike, I'll either do the work into the wind and Von will be on the wheel, I'll either do the work up the hill um, and in the harder sections and on the slower se or on the faster sections, downhills, tailwind, I'll put Von on the front. And that's worked for, for years. We've, we've used that solution for... Um, any terrain, I guess, we're just used to riding with each other and um, putting out effort where we need to. This changed the game entirely. And Yeah, so there was a couple of sections where there were like overpasses or, I don't know, a couple of rolling hills. And normally I would just sit at my threshold and just, you know, tick over it nicely. But <laughs> I felt like I wanted to punish Shane a little bit. So I was, <laughs> I was pushing it on a few of those ones just to see what kind of reaction I'd get. And he was like, well, what are you doing? <laughs> Yeah, and the answer there was, oh, I'm on 380. I'm like, yeah, that's 480 for me, so just back it off a bit. So as soon as we switched it off, and unfortunately I switched it off where the headwind was. So, but... Not only the headwind, what else was there? Uh, a dog. Oh. <laughs> okay, I forgot this part. So we've pulled around a corner, it's, it's, we've gone to one hour, it was one hour and one minute, so I'm like, okay, lap that, and we'll compare our power numbers on our Garmin's, and then we'll pull over, I'll set the, the power to zero. Yeah, As we've gone to pull over and stop, a dog has come running out at us from one of the farmyards. I'm like, shit, dog, go, 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 it's good sprint training. So Vaughn's taken off up the road, I've got my head down, I'm like, oh shit, this is still on 100 extra watts, so... <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea what yeah, was going on. I, That's one of my biggest fears is getting chased down by a dog and getting my ankles mauled or something. Oh, God. My oh. biggest fear is getting chased down by a dog and not being able to get away. So, yeah, thanks to the air hub, I only got killed by a dog. But uh, it's fine. What I found in the park, actually, to deal with dogs, one thing I've done, usually the way I deal with dogs is just go, go primal, scream, shout, I've actually punched a dog in the face one. I, I didn't really, it's just reaction. So a dog has come running up next to me and I've just swung wildly at it and smacked it across the head. But with a dog, they'll just bounce back and keep chasing. 
One thing I found though, if you put yourself, your bike, if you're you know, in a standoff or a Mexican standoff, is that the word? Yeah. Shoot them out with a dog. Oh, oh yeah, okay. shoot them out, it'd be handy. But um, if you're standing there with a the dog, you put your bike frame between you and the dog. And you can okay. always, like a... Like a shield. Like a shield, yeah. So, um, anyway, that's what I've had to do once before I until the owner... Quarks comes. are good for that. Quarks? <laughs> what, but the big chain ring and the yeah. jugular of the dog, anyhow. We won't get into I that. I so. want them to chase me, that's all. Don't happens every now and then on a country road so you'll come past a farmyard or something and a dog will come out but you, you, you get to know where they are you get to know where they are is what I'm trying to say right so we'd uh, escape the dog yeah. we'd come up to a bridge that said road closed but typically as a cyclist you know we, if it says road well, I guess it's inquisitive nature of people it says road closed what do we do? Yeah, we went up to see how closed it was. <laughs> we thought we might be able to pick a plank and get across or something like that. Well, they've only closed half the bridge or something. No, they closed the entire bridge. They, they, they ripped the bridge entirely out. So there's a, a road in Horsham that everyone will know called Three Bridges. Three Bridges is now two bridges for now. They're, they're fixing it. So we couldn't get across. So we turned around, went back into town. Well, the long way. Into the wind. I got a puncture in the rear. And as I was fixing the puncture, I was pumping the tire up, pumping the tire up, and up the road was coming, it was a tractor heading our way. And we thought, oh, can we beat the tractor? So on the road, and off we roll. And I thought we had it covered. I thought we were doing probably 35 maybe or so, and the tractor's, yeah, it wasn't encroaching on us too much. But then I had an idea. I thought we'd back off, get a bit of respite from the tractor. So, we had a bit of fun with the tractor, and the, the farmer was good. We gave him a wave as he came through. Yeah, I was stoked because uh, that was the headwind section. So I'm like, oh, I hope he turns right into the direct headwind as well. And he did. It was only for maybe, what, not even a K, but it was good. Yeah, it was only a K into the headwind, but all up it was a few minutes yeah. of uh, sitting on the tractor. The thing that I had to remind Von of, though, and you get this when you're pulling into an echelon or working a turn in a group, you don't accelerate. As soon as they're next to you, you can't start accelerating. You have to accelerate before somebody passes you so you're up to speed as they come past. So it's so, kind of like when you're doing team time trial work or you see them in that pace line that yeah. you have to accelerate before the last person comes past. Yeah. You have to anticipate that because you'll see, if you watch any of the world's time trial stuff, once you've done a turn on the front, you swing off and the, one of the hardest things to do is swing back onto that rear wheel because they'll come past you at a speed differential of 4, 5, 10 k's an hour and for you to go from 35 k's an hour to 40 or 45, you've got to accelerate again. So you've got to make that transition as smooth as possible. How does that relate to the tractor? Well, I told Von to jump just before the tractor comes past so the chase wasn't too hard. So you got to, so you pretty much just jump back onto the wheel and you did a really good job. Yeah, it was fun. Heaps of fun. <laughs> So, drafting a tractor, I was a bit hesitant, I'm sort of backing off, he had his hazard lights on so he didn't know which way he was going to turn or when he was going to swing off, but it was fine, so I let Von uh, chase the wheels and I followed along, and good training. We'll talk more about motor pacing another day and why motor pacing is so good, but in summary, it's about leg speed, about bike handling at higher speeds than what you're normally used to. If you're riding by yourself doing 30Ks, 40Ks an hour, it's entirely different. Sort of your bike handles a little bit, well, a lot differently than doing 50 to 55Ks an hour, which is what a lot of the riders would have been experiencing yesterday in the Melbourne to Warney, which was that way in the wind. So motor pacing just teaches you to be alert. Your bike handles a little bit differently. Um, leg speed, gearing, and concentration. How good was Melbourne to Warrnambool? <laughs> Man, we watched the live stream yeah. of that yesterday. Uh, the winner, Nathan Elliott, good mate. We've raced with yeah. Nathan for uh, years and years as he was upcoming through the ranks. Yeah. Um, he stuck with the sport. Um, and his biggest supporters as well are his parents, John and Sophie. And uh, I'll link the photo of him crossing the finish line. I was in tears watching the, uh, the live stream. So good. Um, just brilliant, just brilliant. They were, uh, they were at our wedding as well. So um, the first thing, we went out to a family dinner last night. The first thing I said is, hey, the people who were at our wedding, one of the guys, the big tall red-headed kid, <laughs> he, he won one of Australia's <laughs> biggest races. Absolutely brilliant. So good. So well. Yeah, we were following all the way along on Twitter. And then in the last mm, couple of Ks, they periscoped the, the stream from out the back of a car. So there wasn't any live TV footage for this, but that was like being there, like I was sitting in the back of a car um, 
yeah, no, no commentary or anything. We were just watching Twitter alongside it. Um, but it was amazing just to see him get away. He was in the breakaway all day. Oh, love it. It's, um, as I was saying to Von, it's so, yeah, what year is this? 2012. We're sitting here watching Twitter, which is static text. Um, I mean, look, it's really great, but... Um, it, it's better than nothing. It's better than nothing, which is what we had before. Yeah, but at what point did we get to... I mean, Periscope was fantastic, but that was the... That was grassroots coverage. Yes. Where is the event coverage? Shouldn't the event have had somebody with some 4G dongles and a few iPhones and a few, you know, just a bit of a control centre? It doesn't take much to do that. I guess, look, well, it takes money and, and the expertise, so I guess that's what they're going to be struggling with. But at what year? I mean, 2016, where's our hover cars? I mean, we've got, look at the connectivity we have now. We've got high-speed internet broadband right here, right now, yet we're looking at a sport that is just struggling for coverage. So. Summer of Cycle, I'll link to those guys below. Dan Wilkins and the crew behind that, Andrew Gooding. Um, even the Maven was out there covering it, so I'm keen to see his blog on that. Yeah. So it, it, this coverage is so important, and that's why I'm, I, I continue with the channel as well. Even our banter in the car. If we can just get people, I guess, doing more things, being more active, being more positive, the comments below. Let's, we'll go through a few comments, and I'll do a bit of a Q&A in the comments. But that kind of stuff, support it. And if you like what they're doing, Summer of Cycle, um, the Periscope stuff, let them know. Because a lot of the times people can consume and love it, but if you feed back to them that you, like, that you like it, that means so much. And, I mean, this is like the complainers and the haters. You'll always hear from those guys. They're the squeaky wheels. But people who aren't the squeaky wheels, yeah. the ceramic bearings kind of people who love life and aren't squeaking, let them know. Just send them a message, send them an email, follow them, just... Because that stuff was amazing. Yesterday, like, to be in tears watching a live stream, who would have thought? But uh, Nathan Elliott, fucking champion. Absolute champion. Champion. Another thing is um, just having that exposure of um, inspiration as well. Because there were 12 women that signed up to do the Warney, and three finished on the podium. One was outside time limit. Um, all the rest had mechanicals or um, didn't finish. So Bike snaps in the... Um, oh. Yeah, not brandy snaps, bike snaps in the feed zones. <laughs> yeah, some tubes like brandy snaps. Um, so, yeah, being able to have accessible information about how those women were doing throughout the day. Like, I was sitting in my kit at home, ready to go for my ride, but I didn't want to leave till I saw what the result was. Yeah. And, um, you know, it might have been a few minutes after the guys, but I wanted to know right there and then what the outcome was. Because I knew those girls, you know, I've ridden with them. Like um, Tess Fabry, she did the Zwift Academy with me. Right. I've raced with her in the NRS in the last couple of years. Super strong, um, super strong. Amazing rider with her strength uh, and like strong will in the pack to be able to do 270 k's of racing. And then Fee Yard, who came in second, um, we, not raced, we rode with her up in Cairns when we were there earlier this year. And um, we had a great time um, finding more about the environment up in Cairns. She took us for a personal tour, essentially. Strong rider. I knew that she was going to go well, so it was great to see. Yeah, I was following Carly McKay, um, another rider. She had her Garmin Live Connect on. Now, I've spoken about Strava Beacon, yeah. and I've done a few things on that on the channel. Um, I'm only from a data, data tech point of view and also information privacy, but Carly had her... Garmin Live Track on, which includes heart rate, speed, power, um, everything, and, and, and yeah. Yeah, on bike telemetry, which was fantastic to watch. I was sort of watching her little data all day just to see where she was. Yeah, fascinating stuff to go through. And you could see, yeah, she hit the hills, the speed went down, and you could get an overall picture of how she was going throughout the day. Um, so just to open up from a, a data point of view, now Carly did that, I'm not sure how she's done it, I'm sure, I'm, I'm guessing it was a, a Garmin with a phone in her back pocket, that's all it took to get all of that telemetry online and for me to be a fan of that and to follow her, her journey along. Now uh, in the pro ranks you've got Die Data doing that and I'm guessing they've got people coming in, so Dimension Data, large IT company, well a global massive unit of, yeah. anyhow, what, we all know who Die Data is if we're into, into bikes or IT. They spend, I guess, hundreds of thousands of dollars doing that, whereas Carly's done that herself with yeah. tech in her pocket. That's cool. And again, it comes back to the Periscope stuff and the grassroots coverage of the sport. There's a lot of tech around that you imagine if we used the Garmin group track and we had a whole peloton of riders doing that and then, say, V2 or um, Summer of Cycle 
come along and, and package that in a certain way where we could just really follow along and do a live track ourselves. Minimal cost, I guess the, it's the expertise in setting that up and making sure it's reliable and robust um, so and the bandwidth. What, what I've seen you do is some of those Zwift rides live where you mash in a, a visual feed yeah. of what Zwift is playing on screen and then you've added some commentary or taking questions from people. You could do a similar thing, is what you're saying, with yeah. this Garmin stuff. So you're able to track on a map mm -hmm. the telemetry and all of the riders, in theory, um, plus add your own commentary to it. And oh, maybe, right, yeah. I don't know whether or not you could add some visuals. That's the other hard yeah. part. Hmm. Look, you could have a control center. Just like, let's just have a think about this. I mean, we've got the bandwidth now to do this. I mean, again, it's, it's about money and cost of bandwidth, but you could have something like OBS, open broadcast software, um, or something maybe a commercial product. You could have, you could pull in people's feeds, pull in people's periscopes in a certain window. You could have live commentary running. Um, Twitter ticker. Twitter tickers on the side. Yeah. Um, I guess, oh, one thing we noticed yesterday as well, people were using the Melbourne to Warney hashtag to promote other events or talk about other things to be in their feed. Bad, bad, bad form on point, on topic. If you want to be under people's noses, do it in a tactful way, that is not the way to do it. So if you're going to be hashtagging Melbourne Dewarney, make your post about the Melbourne Dewarney. Yeah. Or after, especially when the live feed's coming through and people are following that as an, an event fan. If you don't want to know about... It was Caulfield Racing, I saw one. This guy had used hashtags from about five or six Australian related things. Uh, that's, that, oh, it was... that's a trending topic thing, that's different. We were seeing people go out of their way to just be noticed yeah anyway that's just but if you so you could curate your your ticker feed I guess but that's not far off look Peter Mullins's family Ross Mullins Rosso Mullins he was doing live feeds probably four or five years ago when 3G first came along and it wasn't just in TV it was another streaming somebody will know it if you're listening uh, no it's Ustream Ustream I believe it was was before uh, Facebook went live and, you know, all these other services came along for the live. Bike events, what kind of things were... Uh, bake, I think they had bake crits. Oh, cool. So they were set up at a certain spot and you could watch that. It was only minimal because... And why that probably didn't take off back then, bandwidth was expensive. Yeah. And the audience really wasn't there. Whereas nowadays, who's got Twitter? Everyone. Well, Twitter's probably a bad example. Who's got Facebook live? Everyone. Who's got YouTube live? Everyone. Your, your device is now in your pocket, whereas back then not everyone had a smartphone. You know, um, speaking of Peter, she also tweeted out when she was over in the US, she put up a Facebook link as well to one of the races that they were doing over there, the crits, and that someone was saying, we're going to put up some free crits for you to watch, but for the main events, we're going to ask for a $5 donation to pay for all the infrastructure or, or whatever the concept was. But the, the idea was they were providing some free uh, live stream racing and further ones for paid to yeah. yeah further things on amazing I mean I've spoken about this before as well monetization of content it's super hard um, to even just I mean to cover costs is probably impossible you need I guess partners on board or companies on board that's pretty much the only way at the moment to do it monetization from YouTube it's like two cents per view hour or something like that Monetization per live events would be even harder because they're such short little snippets. Yeah, yeah, go this back route. Sorry, we're just rerouting ourselves based on the GPS here. Oh, we're not using Waze. Ah, I should watch my own advice. And yeah, anyhow. It's a back way here we're going to take back into Ballarat in the car. If you're listening, we're in the car. What was I saying? So, yeah, so monetization is a difficult one. I think what we'd need is, um, I think the answer at the moment would be to partner with either a company, but you, you've got to be, you've got to provide value to the viewers. At the moment, value is the content itself. Asking for people for $5, you probably get, look, asking for donations and asking for money, I've never really seen that work too well. So they may get, let's just say they even get 50 people donate $5, what's that, 250 bucks? Correct my math if I'm wrong. Um, I mean, 250 bucks, and if you're setting up a massively infrastructure live feed, that's not a lot of money. Yeah, I mean, you can spend up to two and a half grand on that. So, and these things aren't going to go viral. Uh, whereas if a company came along, say Victoria Tyres, as an example, they even ride those tyres, but just as, as, a, as, a, as a bike brand, um, for them to put up some money, maybe to put a logo down the bottom, or even to discuss what's relevant to the topic or you're relevant to the event you're watching, 
Um, I mean, Mitchelton wineries, things like that. But, I mean, do they actually convert to sales? Do you actually buy something if you see them? Advertising nowadays, we're all a bit... I mean, I, I put blinkers on. I don't even notice most advertising or what it's even about. Um, I need, for me, I need things to be contextual. Like, I've got a... Look, to be honest, I've got a tool that logo on them part of those guys they look after us and you know we can get mates rates for people for taller we've got the racks on the roof i can tell you that and you can see me wearing this jumper there's no context there but if i was to tell you hey we put our bikes on the roof it, you know, it was much easier to pack the car the other day because we threw the bikes on the roof and jumped in the car in five minutes yeah, awesome. so that's context um and what bike racks do we use and what's my experience of those racks you know um let alone the bags that we use yeah. oh yeah the we chuck everything in our taller bags as well I don't know, I'm not charging for things, I don't know. There's there's actually a donation thing on my vlog. I don't know which side it is. I didn't actually put it there, YouTube put it there to help out content creators. And somebody's donated $20 a while ago. I think they liked the pedals video, so they donated 20, that was cool. Uh, and someone put in $5 the other day, just randomly. And I guess it's value for value there. There's, a, there's Patreon as well, people are doing Patreon stuff. Anyhow, I'll stop rambling about this. I don't think asking for money works. Yeah, well, it, it depends who you ask and when. So asking people that are attending the crit to pay for online viewing of it doesn't make sense. Mm. It, but how do you get people that are online to then pay to view something? Because they need to know that it's coming, they need to have accessibility. So it, well, it's almost like buying tickets to a show. Yeah. So if you know the show's coming, you can purchase a $5 ticket uh, to so watch. You've something. just pulled up something interesting there as well. If you're going to charge for something, you need to then pre-promote it. Yes. So that, that then expands out your costs of running the show. Yeah. So as I've said with my videos, you come up with the concept, the idea, and yeah, the publication. And then afterwards, the tail of a support of a video is all my comments or the comments. And so with those, you've got another addition on top of that, which is the um, promotion of your event to make sure people will watch it and know it's coming. So again, once you monetize things or you know, ask for things, the game changes a lot. Anyhow, we'll stop talking about the monetization and stuff. That's it's interesting, but I'm just interested in using tech for um, expanding the experience. Like last yeah. night, I watched the UCI Women's Road World Championships on a massive 80-inch screen TV, live streamed into Horsham on the internet. It was amazing experience. Yeah. Yeah. Like it was beautiful. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's free content too. So I got that experience right in where I was at that time. Yeah, that was the from the UCI.ch, so UCI's YouTube channel. Um, I'm, I should have seen the, uh, the view stats of that, actually. We could have seen how many people were watching it live. Um, I saw a tweet yesterday that Eurobike is changing the date of Eurobike from, when was it, late, uh, early September into mid-July. Yeah, in 2017, next year. And so that changes Eurobike, the timing of that. And there's going to be no um, customer day for people to go in and be a customer, I guess. There's, there's trade days for Eurobike, which is what I was at. And then I think the last two days or so are, are customers. So they go along and generate hype. So people will, the trade will go there and talk about things and you, know, show, and you can get glimpses of what's going on and the announcements and the products there. And then the customers can come along and have their own experience, which is fantastic. I don't know what's behind that. So is it... At the same location, so at the kind of border of Germany, France, Italy area? Yeah, I believe so. Um, I believe it's always in the same spot. Okay. I think that's going to th throw a spanner in the works. The feedback from that online from everyone else was like, what the hell are they doing? And the reason I think it's a bad idea is what we saw this year, we had the Cyclops with the hammer trainer announcement. The trainer was there, but it's still not out. We can't get our hands on it. There's been delays. The tax with the Flux, which should have been the number one trainer there, we still haven't seen the flux, so there's product delays on that. Um, power to Max NG, new power meter with Bluetooth and Ant, which I'm really hoping to get a hold of for my new bike. Well, new, old, you know what I mean. Uh, the bike that I'm building up. Still not available until next month. So that was, when was Eurobike? That was two, a month and a half ago now, and we're still a month away from products actually being consumables. So if you move Eurobike two months prior to that, that product life cycle is going to change a lot. Um, I don't know what their thoughts are. Um, and the media hype is going to be all at the Tour de France. Yeah. So media hype being during Tour de France, they have uh, saw a rumour as well. They're looking at expanding um, Tour de France women's stage instead of just being that last stage on the Champs-Élysées, that they'll have a few more women's stages. So 
it'll be interesting to see how they share the coverage to that. But also women's Giro is normally during um, men's Tour de France, so interesting to see how they're going to organise that, yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. You can't cram... Look, look, July is a fantastic month. Even in Australia, where it's like the depths of winter, you know, all the cycling fans are going off. There's, we, I mean, how many Zwift nights do we hold this year? People just drinking beers and watching. It was just, like, it's a great month we always look forward to. Um, because there's so much media coverage on around cycling and hype and it's in the news and, you know, our sport we all love is being discussed and is everywhere. So, yeah, to cram Eurobike into that as well, I think they need to spread it out a bit. Keep it where it's at. If, if anything, that should push it out to a time of the year where the companies can start pushing their products. Like, you can release information and, you know, talk about, like, things like the hammer was discussed months prior, but, we, like, all we got to see is we got to knock... Prototype? Yeah, we got to see the prototypes. What's... The, you know... Ah, anyway, that's that. So, speaking of um, feedback and things online, let's have a look at a, a bit of a... I'll do a bit of a Q&A from what we've seen on the comments on these videos so again it's an astounding yes for me to do la, 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 la tap <laughs> awesome excellent well i'll get organizing we'll get up there anyone want, that wants to come ride with us let us know yeah we'll get a group going oh someone did say you can't bitch and moan about the la tap and then pay the money to enter i agree <laughs> <laughs> But it was an astounding, yes, do it, Lama. Yep, yep you got to do it. Take your camera. So I'll go along. Come along. Yeah. We'll, uh, we'll be riding some hills. Um, what else? Oh, by the way, Le Tap, mm. presented by the Tour de France, Tour de France. Somebody had mentioned, and I, I really appreciate the feedback I got on this one because I'm now more learned. Um, they said that it's called Le Tap, presented by Tour de France, because over in France, they do a stage of the Tour de France. Uh. Ah, so it all makes sense now. Why it's all ASO? Why they? So it's the amateur. It's the yeah. You know, it's the you know. Yeah. The amateur version of oh my. There's a nice owl over there. We just saw Country Victoria. So it's a um. Yeah, which makes complete sense. But they also said so. They explained to me that. So thank you for that. They also said yeah. What the hell's got anything to do with Australia? I don't know. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> and that was my point altogether. So let me go through a few of the. I should bring out the um, laptop for this, but I'll just go through on the phone for now. Um, I'll go from top bottom, so this is new stuff. So yesterday I did the Air Hub, um, I, I discussed earlier on what the Air Hub was all about. Um, $2,000, are they for real? I think this would be useful, but I doubt many people would pick it up if that was the price range. Yeah, look, agreed, two grand is a lot of money for what this tech is. Um, but the team will be looking at that. I mean, that's exactly feedback they want to know. If they're not selling the unit because it's too much, excellent, that's good feedback. They'll look at that. Um, the, I mean, the R&D that's gone into this is quite a lot, but again, I, I won't justify the price. Um, I'm looking at it purely from a, a usage point of view and a technology point of view and what can be done with it. Um, as I discussed in my video yesterday about um, if you connect this with Garmin IQ, at the moment you've got to use your phone to control it. So you have that in your back pocket. If you can control it via your head unit for Garmin um, and just sort of thinking about where this tech is going to go. But yeah, back to the price. Interesting. Um, I also see that, I mean, these guys could hit the jackpot if a uh, cycling federation wants to buy, say, 200 of these for their juniors or... Who knows? I mean, it's a, the market's global nowadays. So it's the same with indoor trainers. You look at the Tax Neo here in Australia, you're like, that's so expensive. But overseas, it's a different price point. So depending on the value of dollars. Um, now, what else? Um, great job explaining how does it work. Do you think it, it compromises traction or does it add a little bit? Um, is it enough to notice when cornering? Well, in that video, I took a corner at 25 to 30 k's an hour, no hands on the bars and just sort of swung around the corner with no hands on while it was applying 100 watts and the bike handled exactly the same 100 watts isn't a lot but yeah. <laughs> how does that feel going up a hill though tell me what that experience was like yeah well if Is you're it smooth on the way up or what yeah it applies smooth but the application of it is always pretty consistent. Now, it only kicks in after 15 kilometres an hour. So you start off and it's, it kicks in at 15k, so it's not there all the time. And it kicks out at about 45. Because once you're punching 45... Actually, I don't know why it kicks out at 45. Anyhow, it does. They're your zones you want to work in anyway. But, look, yeah, I, I swung around a corner. Um, Traction-wise, um, no. It didn't change the traction at all. Traction's more to do with your tyre pressure. Um, I had a Gator Skin 23mm on the front, brand new. I had about 100 psi. It's probably a bit too much for that tyre, really. It's a training tyre. It should go down to 90 to 95. Uh, traction wasn't a problem. Um, but handling-wise, it's a heavy front wheel. How did it feel in the 
crosswind? Was it like a deep dish wheel? No, I didn't blow her in the crosswind at all. So, it, yeah, it was just, it is what it was what it was. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. I'm heading up to the attack with our friends. Excellent. Hey, we'll see you there. Yes. Um, I think it is crap. Oh, okay. So when I want to train harder, I ride faster. I need, um, and to need more power at low speeds, is there any demoralizing? Okay. Let me respond to that one. So I think it's crap. That's a mental um, state. Yeah, okay. yeah. So I, I want to train harder, I ride faster. Sure. If you're out as an, as, as an individual, yeah, sure. If you want to, you know, up to 300 watts or 400 watts, just ride faster. But when I'm riding with Vaughn, if I up the power to three to 400 watts, she's out the back. Yep. And that's not fun. So yesterday, I upped the resistance on this unit. Yeah, I was going technically a little slower for the power I was outputting, but it was training. It wasn't racing. Yeah, in a race, it'd be demoralizing going slower because it's about speed, but training is about effort. So depending on how you look at it. Um, yeah, that's the so, point. Yeah, training just, is about effort. The effort that you're putting in. So later on, when you want to apply it in a race, it comes down to the speed and how effectively you apply that effort to get the speed. Yeah, the speed's there, exactly. Um, yes, ride. Okay, yes, I'm running all the tap. Uh, what <laughs> velodrome is that? That's a Horsham velodrome that we're at yesterday. It's, yeah, I sort of discussed in the video how it's pretty much unused. They had a Christmas carnival here in, in Victoria. They have four or five, six different velodromes outdoors, and they have races over the Christmas carnivals over the Christmas week, I think it is, and Horsham in different, different towns across the country of Victoria. Um, I believe that's now dead and gone in Horsham. Lots and lots of issues with Horsham. Should I tell a story? Yeah, let's tell a story about Horsham Cycling Club. Let's hope they're not watching from here. Okay, story time. <clears throat> so I wasn't into cycling much in Horsham. Um, I rode to and from school. I never competed. The competing side of things, I took it up later on in life um, in Melbourne at about 24, 25, 26, a bit too late to make anything of it, really, I guess. Not that I was probably ever that good. Anyhow, took it up later in life. I never was into cycling in Horsham. But I have competed in a few events in Horsham and around. About 10 years ago, um, they hold a festival every year in Horsham. And so I was never involved in the Horsham Cycling Club. A lot of, uh, a lot of stories about people going to other towns rather than go to the local club. And just the general administration of the club has always been questioned. Um, and those who are, there's a few people who are like, you put their heart and soul behind it. And I look, uh, anything more I say about that, I'm going to get in trouble. So, look, let's just leave it there. And here's the part I'll get in trouble for. So they have a Christmas festival in Horsham every year. It's called the Canaroo Festival. Fireworks, um, street parades, and things like that. A perfect opportunity for a, a, a criterium race to be held in town. So, I don't know where I put the comment. It must have been on the, Her uh, the not the Herald Sun, the Wimmer Mail Times online, so the Horsham paper. I, uh, I put a comment online or wherever it was, it got published in the paper. And what I said was, look, it'd be great to hold a criterium race for, the, for cycling, to showcase cycling in Horsham. I'm sure I could get a few people from Melbourne down and we'll, uh, we'll put on a show. But, you know, I'm, I'm not sure Horsham Cycling has... Um, I, I said something. I wasn't, too much, I wasn't too much of a prick. What did I say? It was like, yeah, let's, so the idea was let's hold a criterium, you know, what, just to see what the response would have been from the locals. Or was it the, you know, the Horsham's only focused on track or something like yeah, that? Yeah, I think that's the way it finished. The, 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 the comment, even though it was short, was that maybe the club's more focused on track. Yeah, anyhow, fast forward a week later, I was in town for a funeral. I was getting dressed, nice clothes, getting ready for a funeral. It wasn't a, I mean, it wasn't a good day. I get a phone call. It's the president of the Horsham Cycling Club. He introduces himself. I said, well, g'day, mate. I haven't spoken to you before. I've... Well, initially, I wanted to join the club as a member, but they sort of said, no, you live in Melbourne, you know, get it. They weren't interested in having me as a member. So anyhow, that was another story. So he's chatting away, and he's re referenced what I put in the paper about, you know, holding an event there. And then he went full off the charts. Yeah. I'm like, what the hell is going on here? So the story is, mate, there's a lot of people unhappy with you in Horsham, I wouldn't show your face around here again. I'll go full Ogan mode, because I'm, I'm, I'm just retelling the story here. Mate, I wouldn't show your face around Horsham at all. There's a few people really, really unhappy with what you said, including me. So just don't come back here, or else. I'm like, what the f is going on? Seriously, I was threatened not to come back to my hometown 
of Horsham by the president of the cycling club. What a f clown. So I, I couldn't believe it. Just because he thought I was having a crack at the... If I wanted to have a crack, I'd have a f***ing crack. Anyhow, here I was getting ready for a funeral. I was in town. The dickhead didn't know, even know who I was. He wouldn't even know me if he saw me at this point in time. But he was offended by something. So if you want to know why Horsham Cycling Club doesn't exist anymore, it does, that's the truth right there. There's one pole behind it all. I have to edit a bit of this out because I get in trouble again. But yeah, to be threatened, seriously, to be run out of town, or people would, I'm not sure, I'm not quite sure what violence it was. It wasn't shotgun or punch head in, it was something, but it was don't show my face around. I was in town. It had no consequences, so I was I was bullied for trying to say, oh, unless the you know, Horsham Cycling Club's... Wide idea. That's the, the concept. If you're trying to brainstorm and, and show an idea, I understand it was with a bit of an undercut at the end, but, you know, how do you respond? How do you respond to that? Mm. Mm. Anyhow, so Horsham Cycling Club, I don't know, how did I get onto that? That was just a story. So, yeah, and that stuck with me. I've still got his number in my phone. If he calls again, I'll... Uh, I'll pick it up with a different voice, but unbelievable. But, but that again, tiger stripes doesn't change, or is it leopard spots? Either way, <laughs> and that explains so much. I took it personally because that was a personal threat. Um, I mean, I could have reported it, I guess, to Cycling Australia or Cycling Victoria, but I mean, I didn't want to get involved. I was going to a funeral. I told him I was going to a funeral and to get involved. But there you go. I mean, I mean, that, and that also says a lot about you know where things progress. If that's how they deal with it. Anyway, so Horsham Cycling Club, happy days. Not many members there at all. Um, most people are now members of the Veterans Club there, if at all, um, or members of Stall Great Western, Ararat Cycling Club, um, or even a Melbourne club. But that track is good real estate. I suspect that it will be bulldozed one day soon. Um, okay. Yeah, it's a brilliant track, and there was some, there's some great, there's a lot of history behind there as well, but anyhow, that's what you get. Oh, so back to more um, Q&A &A with Lama and Vaughn. Six, I oh, don't even hang on. What else? I don't know, uh, the ticking of the, okay, we've talked about that. Uh, did you get the kids to film you around the velodrome? Yeah, those young girls who were um, playing around and riding all over the velodrome when I was there. They stayed out of the way, which was nice. Um, I got them to hold the camera and film me, but that, that way they stayed out of the way too. <laughs> uh, Powder Max owner here, checking in. Yep, yep, I got my eyes on the new Powder Max. Uh, should I do the tap? Yes, do it, ride life. Someone rides a giant. <laughs> uh, greetings from South California, Shane. That's a good looking frame. Uh, what group set am I gonna build with it? Uh, it'd be good, helpful to see your build up and why you pick those components. Uh, cool, thank you AJ Land for your comments. I'm going to build up that TCR bike with the Durace group set that I've got, 11 speed Durace 9000. I got the group set for under $1,000 without the chain set. And I picked up the frame for 800 bucks. So it's really quite a budget bike build from the S-Works. It's a budget bike build. But hopefully it's going to be really, really good. So we'll see how it goes. What are your thoughts on about having a giant back in the house? Oh good, I've owned two or three of them in my time. Um, yeah, just another bike. We might need to move house though, we've got limited space. <laughs> yeah, it's filled up with all smart trainers. Uh, Shane, any tax flux or cyclox hammer action yet? Aha, uh -huh. exactly what I mentioned before. No, still waiting on those ones. <laughs> Saying yes to the camera for the tap, okay. Yes to all for the camera for the tap, okay. Just bought my first ever smart trainer today. Went with the Tax Vortex, really excited. Um, thanks for the videos. I probably would have never have known about Zwift or smart trainers without your videos. Awesome. That's exactly what it's all about. That's cool. Sharing the experience. Sharing the experience. Um, you can't moan about the tap and then pay all the money to do it. <laughs> Love it. Exactly. Um, I guess and that's why I love doing these live videos. I guess you get my sense of humour. I love taking the piss, um, but also I guess in a non-threatening way, in a um, how to just light-hearted. I don't know. Your uh, retelling of that abortion story is quite threatening. <laughs> oh, unless I'm threatened and back into a corner. But look, the way I present information and stuff, it's it's all just real. It's no bullshit. It's um, you got to love life. Real talk. Real talk? No, not was that a Drake song or something? Yeah, yeah. it was an old song. Yeah. Yeah. You get it. So, and a lot of people, and a lot of the comments that 
sort of go left field from what I expect. Or a lot of the times people don't, um, they either haven't watched or haven't come along the journey of all the videos. And I don't expect everyone to watch every video, but look, I don't mean, to, if I try and be clear if I hang shit on something or if I'm, yeah, I don't want to be offensive or belittle. Um, I try and make sure it's, um, oh, we've got a new roundabout here. I hate to be one of these people listening to this on a podcast. Again, we're driving in the car. But yeah, so I'm trying to keep things lighthearted. And I guess these live ones are a way for me to show what it's all about. This is non-scripted. We're just talking in the car. Definitely live. So yeah, pe I can tell when people get it. And, and please use emoticons. If you're taking the piss, put a winky, put a smiley. I use, I use way too many smileys in my stuff. But I'm always smiling. Or, you know, if there's a wink there, it's a bit of a joke around. But, but there's also the serious side as well. Such as being run out of Horsham and not being welcomed back into town for 10 years. No, nothing there. Uh, ride the TCR. Uh, love you to ride the TCR with Vaughn. I like these little podcasts. Keep up the good work. Thank you, Tommy. Excellent review. Thank you on the truth about smart trainers. Ah, uh -huh. just a comment on the truth about smart trainers. I did a video early on discussing what smart trainers are because what was I going to do with a kicker after a year or so of ownership? <laughs> we were ready to turf it. I was done. <laughs> um, just a quick reference back to that video I did. Talking about smart trainers, they originally weren't built for what we're using them for now. Um, smart trainers were built for, you know, 300 watts, 400 watts, 400, and they were sort of uh, static, very digital devices. On, and off, on, on off with power. Yeah, exactly right. But we're now using them very dynamically. So holding wheels, grabbing wheels, chasing people down. Like who would have ever thought, when they were coming up with the concept of the kicker, they would have never have thought, oh, there's going to be a the Tax World Championships virtual race on this weekend and people are going to be holding wheels and going in breakaways. There's going to be commentary and all facilitated by these smart trainers. So in a nutshell, these things weren't built for what we're using them for. The new gen ones are. So things like the Flux and the Drivo and the, all, and, and the Ramper. What else with the Hammer? They're, now, they're built for what we're using them for. So I expect to see the experience just become a lot better with those new trainers. Let me keep going through these uh, comments. So, I mean, these comments mean a lot too. I, I look at the comments quite regularly and it keeps me guided in the right direction. Uh, the feedback we got from our very first car one was, a little, as I put on the start, don't watch these. These are different to our normal videos. They're not the short, sharp, techie ones. These are just discussions. But the feedback has been great. So we'll keep going. And that's all because of the comments. Uh, just ordered mine and the gel block, so someone just ordered a smart trainer. I need to buy shares in smart trainer companies. Um, the best line of this video, <laughs> and here's one that got, we were talking about uh, magpies. Yeah. <laughs> and and, uh, and swooping magpies. These guys are evil. And the comment was, the best line of this video, I'll sit there swinging, I'll fight, this was me talking, I'll fight a magpie, you yeah. know. I'll take a magpie on and Luke Robertson's come back with, you sir are a brave man. <laughs> I'd fight a small bird. Yes. Trust me. And he, uh, he, he gets it. He gets it. And try, if you've ever been swooped by a magpie, you'll get it. You get angry. It's a fight or a flight. We've talked about that in another video. But anyway, Luke, thanks for that, mate. <laughs> you, you got it. Um, I love this other video. I don't watch, but it said, listen to like a podcast. Ah, that's from Drunken Runt. <laughs> I love usernames. Um, have I done any Zwift car or any podcast before? Um, I did the Zwift cast with Simon Schofield and Nathan Guerra. Um, yeah, just discussing all things Zwift. Probably once every two weeks that comes out. I've gone and got myself some good microphones for that. Um, that's always a bit of fun. Um, all Zwift related or bikes related. Um, Jurian Rider would be proud of you if you're riding the TCR. Jurian Rider. We actually knew Harley a while ago, um, just I guess as you're starting off or before monetization came around. So we've met him over a few times over in Adelaide. Um, super nice guy in person, really humble in person. Um, yeah, so that's my experience with Jurian Ryder. Um, as for his late, later stuff, whoa, interesting. Anyway, I wish him the best for whatever he's doing. Shane, you should join Von on her ride for the tap. Thank you, oh, it looks like. Yes, join us. It's going to be lots of hills, lots of hills to come. Doing your work over here in the west, Shane. Cheers for the plug for South Perth. Rulers. Pronounce something like rulers. Okay, I'm, I'm true bogan at heart, so my pronunciation is sheep. So, yeah, my pronunciation's a little different. So, rulers, rulers. Got it. Uh, Denise George, yes, do the, let's have. Hello, cycling, yes, do it. 
Cool. Thank you, Ballarat Cycling. We will do it. Um, hopefully you don't have a hairline fracture you can't see in that new frame or explode in a new big descent. Uh, buy new. Yep, good call. Yeah, we'd like to buy new. Yeah, exactly. Look, buy new in, in, in a nutsh in, in, in a vacuum, you'd buy new. Money wasn't vacuum, is that the word? In a perfect world, you'd buy new. But 800 bucks with a $900 group set, yeah, that's, that's a pretty good thing. Anyhow, we're here at our destination, so we'll leave it for there for now. Thanks for coming along for another Llama Live with Vaughn. Vaughn. Thanks, Vaughn, for driving. And thanks, everyone, for comments. We'll upload this. And, uh, yeah, look, if anything else, it, just as I do discussions on certain things on videos, smart trainers and power meters and things like that, if there's any discussion points you'd like to see Vaughn and I just shoot the breeze about, put them in the comment section. We'll have a chat. I'm sure we'll come up with something. It's all unscripted, unplanned. And our car's doing strange things. So, <laughs> all right, thanks for watching for now. It's time for lunch. Time for lunch. Cheers. It just went flat right then. Oh, you can see it on the uh, charger. <laughs>